If you take this meaning of limbo from the Cambridge Dictionary, one that resides outside of religious context, the game's purpose and story assume a somewhat opaque nature. Little is left to the imagination concerning the boy who is trapped indefinitely between the depths of life and death. Through this definition, one can assume that from the title and through the game's content that the world cannot be changed. Both elements of death and obscurity are an inevitability. First indications quickly imply that nothing can be done to remove the boy from his situation, and the theme of oblivion becomes abundantly clear from this point on. Only perseverance is required from the player. However, although Limbo is shrouded in mystery and ambiguity, and this video will try to unlock its secrets and peer behind the curtain to look at the underlying narratives, I want to take a few minutes to explore the different meanings and concepts of Limbo as a definition. Doing so helped me gain valuable perspective on why Limbo has more in common with Rorschach inkblots than just a boy who is trapped, searching for an end to his oblivion. If we take a look at the religious context, particularly within the Catholic religion, Limbo is portrayed as a purgatory for those who have sinned and are not yet allotted a place in hell. What's interesting about this theological interpretation of Limbo is that long ago, this concept was divided into four distinct categories. 1. Hell of the Damned, a place in which those rejected by God reside in an everlasting domain of punishment. 2. Purgatory, a post-death state in which souls can be cleansed before allocated to heaven. 3. Limbo of the Patriarchs, a place for those seeking redemption from Jesus Christ before entry into heaven. And most interestingly, Limbo of the Infants, where it can be argued that the similarities between Catholic theology and the game's storylines are closely linked. Although considered hypothetical to Catholicism, this form of Limbo was a permanent residence for those not old enough to commit sin, but still caught in original sin, a passive sin that belongs to all humans. This sin arises from the foundations of Christian belief, which portray the defiance of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Those stuck in Limbo of the Infants have not been baptised, and therefore not been gifted salvation from sin, death and the devil. The most obvious and clear frame of reference to try and decipher Limbo's mysteries is of through this theological lens, derived directly from the title of the game itself and ascribing the boy's predicament to the dark and ominous context of Limbo of the Infants. Furthermore, it's easy to see how this might be applicable to the game's design features, and where this concept of association manifests itself most with the absence of identity. The boy blends into his environment, occluded by a constant shadow. Perhaps the boy is in harmony with the purgatory he is in. That rectification of his sins is the purpose of the story, and you as the player provide him with the agency to do so. One can also assume that the narrative implies the boy has not yet bridged this journey between life and death, and there remains unfinished business. Additional connections can also be made through Catholic theology. The boy's inability to swim, as evident through the puzzles, can be interpreted as an omission from the very water that would have granted him salvation. Vulnerabilities to deadly traps, seemingly made by someone or something far greater than himself, dispense punishment and engender feelings of dread. On the surface then, it's easy to interlace the religious themes of purgatory with the unspoken essence of the game where facets of Catholicism overlay the game directly. However, while similarities between the game mechanics and theology can be made, I believe this only scratches the surface of a true depiction of Limbo's essence. In order to explore these other symbolisms, it's important to consider the journey of the developers, as well as how Limbo's concepts can be interpreted on an individual level, away from a broader picture. Arndt Jensen, founder of Play Dead, initially started his journey at IO Interactive before departing to become a freelance artist. What's interesting about this period was Jensen's desire to pursue work that truly gave justice to his own originality. This would eventually give birth to the beginnings of Limbo's design, and while working as a freelance artist, Jensen would work on the sketches of his ideas, crafting and defining the world of Limbo in his own time. Eventually, these sketches would lead to a collaboration with Dino Patti, and development of Limbo would begin shortly after. In an interview with IGN, Jensen states the following when referring to his time at IO Interactive. I got a good salary. I was really loved at the beginning. 
Everyone loved what I was doing. Then, I don't know, it just became more and more corporate. It became harder to get ideas through. While it's clear Jensen suffered alienation from his work as an artist at IO Interactive, this challenging situation quite literally kickstarted Limo into existence. I find myself wondering how much of his experience struggling to push his ideas through the corporate umbrella transfer into Limbo's design. Jensen further stated, I started drawing concept art without the boy. It was just this secret place. I really tried my whole life to get ideas, but when I drew this first drawing, it was just like, this is the place. While it's difficult to assess and pinpoint where exactly these design choices came from, it can be argued that several visual features baked into Limbo reflect this feeling of alienation from Jensen. For example, the absence of colours leaves a rich, dynamic palette made purely of black, white and greys. This produces underlying feelings of disconnection, ambiguity and uncertainty, alongside anticipation and a desire to amend what lies before us. This particular use of opposites is explained beautifully in a quote from photographer and filmmaker Robert Frank, which reads, Black and white are the colours of photography. To me, they symbolise the alternatives of hope and despair to which mankind is forever subjected. Robert Frank's philosophy on the use of black and white photography can be used to extract additional meaning in Limbo's design. There is not only a visual contrast present, but also conceptually from Jensen that perhaps true, original and flourishing creativity could not thrive well under the rules of corporate regime. That this hope and despair was present and tightly threaded into its construction to provide the player with these unstable emotions. Further effects present in the game amplify these emotional concepts. A lack of defined boundaries and an amplified haze and grain give rise to a sense of murkiness. Absent is the boy's voice, perhaps a concession due to budget. Or perhaps a notion that suggests what is achieved of your own volition carries more weight in the long term than what is said in the short term. These elements allow the lack of definition and structure to reflect Jensen's feelings of disconnection from his work prior to the creation of Limbo. So far, this video has been attributing links between design and influence on a mostly external level. However, there remains one more aspect to discuss when analysing Limbo the player's internal dissection of the visual and auditory events, conscious or unconscious. In 1921, Hermann Rorschach produced the Inkblot test, a projective test designed to stimulate responses to ambiguous visual features. The initial purpose of the ink blot test was to attempt to link analysis of the blots with atypical psychological traits, highlight thought disorders, or to analyse responses to images in which a patient could perceive a human face. When patients were presented with the images, what they saw and how they saw it provided Rorschach with an insight into how the mind worked. Limbo utilises this characteristic on a purely internal level, with no external evaluation. Naturally, there are big distinct differences between the ink blots and Limbo, partly because of its length as an interactive piece of media, as well as the complexity and interlacing of audio and visual presentations when compared to a single image. It is obvious Limbo was never meant to be used as a clinical tool, that its purpose, even at a foundational level, was to provide an entertaining experience. And while it can be argued that this is the case with almost all forms of media, what distinguishes Limbo from other games is that the narrative remains unguided. Its themes draw on aspects of light, dark, hope, despair, life, and death. This ambiguity, much like the ink blots, leaves a vulnerability to interpretation. Whether this is intentional or not, the similarities between them become clearer as players craft meaning and context from experiencing the game. It is this variation of interpretation from the subtleties of gameplay that links the two concepts. The difference between inkblots and limbo is inkblots are about what you see, and limbo is about how you create context. I want to take a deeper look into what elements of the game stand out, as there are sections that exhibit interesting properties. These are parts of the game that encourage personal interpretation, much like the inkblots. One element of design that becomes noticeable immediately, even from the very beginning of the game, is the film grain, a flickering of light. Initially, it seems that this was intentionally trying to replicate the iris of a camera, adjusting to different levels of exposure. 
However, as you progress, a fading of the edges can be seen, a vignette approach to the frame becomes evident and somewhat replicates how the eye would filter visual information. The blurred and out of focus edges of the frame imitate our own use of the fovea, a small portion of the retina allowing a denser resolution and image clarity when viewing objects. Whether it's clear or not, Limbo immediately attempts to manipulate the player into analysing its content with a thought-provoking form. It does this by displaying these effects more prominently than the boy himself. We can see right from the start the composition of these frames suggests an unconscious conflict, and while it can be argued that this is where the boy wakes up, or is born, through symbolic interpretation. It too can be argued that these events also apply to you. It is then left up to the player to decide whether their connection to the boy is simply that of an observer or one that they are tied to more intimately, a reflection of themselves. Limbo creates this conflict once again, deeper into the game, and takes the concept of chaos and order, flipping it on its head. In this particular section, peaceful music plays as you tackle a puzzle with laser-sensitive turrets. The music stops as one of the turrets is destroyed by the other. In fact, it stops so abruptly that it causes a shift in atmosphere as you make your way to the next puzzle. What is left open to interpretation is that even from this audio cue, there may be a congruence and synergy, a flow and a sense of order while the turrets are operational. Once broken by you, that order is shattered. The light and airy synth drone in the background constructs feelings of hope. But is that hope lost after the order is broken? Why is the death of the turret significant enough to force a shift in atmosphere? Further puzzles spark this sense of analysis. The letters spelling hotel used in this sequence, for example. While it can be suggested that this is simply a word containing letters easy for platforming, it's also just as easy to assume that there is a clear symbolic meaning. As the boy is seen traversing these letters, in turn conquering the puzzle, players can attribute the meaning of this hotel depending on one's own experiences. This is one area where our individual interpretations are clearly encouraged. Perhaps that the necessity of sleep, an essential human trait, has been commercialized, that this event in human civilization is considered a unique occurrence of some kind or that the essence of a hotel is to provide a respite from point A to point B, a physical representation of limbo in and of itself. This fits into the world of limbo depending on how you contextualize this event and on what the symbolic nature of the hotel represents. Lastly, the final sequence of the game remains the most ambiguous. After journeying through primitive forests, preliminary forms of civilization, before reaching industrial landscapes, one final puzzle is presented, where all elements and interpretations reach a pinnacle and in turn a conclusion. This is where the summit of chaos lies. The line between life and death is harnessed and the nightmare is shattered. Instead of waking upward, breaking through the light or out of the dream, boy lands feet first in what appears to be glass, or perhaps a symbolic ocean's surface. And whether this perspective of the surface is from above or below, and whatever context you create is Limbo's final inkblot, and you are the observer. While Limbo falls gently into the same way it started, I will not spoil its final scene. I want to take a minute to thank those who watched the video in its entirety, and to those who made this video possible and aided in its creation. I plan to make more and to explore many different genres and themes. If you do leave a comment, I'll be interested to know what you think. Thank you.